Welcome to part 15 of making a Stuart model steam plant. In this episode I'm planning the plumbing of the condenser, making and silver soldering the preheater coil and improving the layout of the steam plant. As I now have quite a lot of PM research piping I'll probably use that to pipe the condenser's exhaust outlet to the chimney of the boiler. Serendipity or happy accidents are quite wonderful things. When I marked out and drilled the positions for the preheater coil inlet and outlet, I didn't look at the pump. But as you can clearly see in this clip, the inlet and outlet of the preheater coil is exactly the same as the inlet and outlet of the pump. This is purely by coincidence and when I sit the copper tube on top of a piece of 3mm brass sheet, everything lines up very well. This is a very dirty old piece of aluminium that was once used for levelling my smart and brown lathe in the previous workshop. I'm going to use it as a former to bend the coil that goes inside the condenser. It's a simple job, I take a piece of 3 16 copper pipe and wind it around a piece of aluminium until it looks like this. I don't want a really massive coil inside the condenser because that will cause the condenser to condense a bit too well and require emptying all the time. This coil size should be sufficient and it will sit in the water in the condenser rather than in the steam space. And as the water pipes are going to go from the pump outlet to the condenser and pass underneath the boiler very close to the burner, I'm sure the water is going to be preheated sufficiently. Over now to my Boxford lathe and I'm drilling the holes in the fittings. And I'm drilling the holes one imperial drill size larger than the 3 16 diameter of the pipe. This will make the fitting of the preheater coil inside the copper tube a whole lot easier. Once I'd finished drilling the fittings, I screwed them in place in the side of the tank. Here's a close-up shot of the preheater coil. It was really tricky was this, to get part of the coil up the centre of the tubing so it all lined up with the fittings on the tank. But because the holes in the fittings were slightly bigger, it was a very easy job to install it inside the tube. There's going to be no chance of this coming loose because the ends of the tubing go well into the fittings and also, very shortly, I'll be silver soldering the entire thing together. I'm thinking ahead and fitting union nuts to the outside of these fittings in an attempt to prevent the acid from attacking the screw threads once it's in the acid bath after the silver soldering process. The day after I ordered some parts from Blackgate's engineering, there was a loud clunk as the package fell through the letterbox. When I opened the package, I found two pieces of brass 3mm thick, which will make the base and cap of the condenser, and the piece of steel you can see behind it is going to be the base for the boiler to sit on, which will also hold the burner. In this part of the clip, I'm removing the exhaust fitting. I won't be silver soldering everything on this condenser. It's not a pressure vessel, and I'm going to soft solder it, but because the preheater coil is going to be above boiler pressure, only very slightly, that's why I'm silver soldering that. Everything's in position, ready to be silver soldered, so it's into the outer part of the workshop to start the job. And here I'm applying some Easy Flow number 2 flux, a lot of Easy Flow number 2 flux. And wherever the flux is, the silver solder will run. That's the plan. All I need now is a heat source. I've fitted a larger nozzle to my blowtorch and it's really fierce, so I have to be careful with this. And I've just shown something that you mustn't do. Do not go straight for the flux. Warm up the rest of the part to help the evaporation of the water, then there's less chance of the flux being blown away by the blowtorch flame. Here, I'm just making sure that there's plenty of flux on the actual joint between the pipe and the fittings. Now it's time to boil off the water. And you will notice that the flux takes on an entirely different appearance, it gets very sticky. I'm poking the flux with the silver solder so you can see this. I would never do a silver soldering job like this if it was on the outside of anything, but it's going to be hidden inside the tank. Here I'm demonstrating something that is a bit of a problem. Be careful how hot you get the copper piping. If you get it too hot it will melt. I once made a thing called a Windermere kettle with a very small, very fine coil inside it and I did just about the same as this. And I melted every bit of the copper coil. But by backing off the heat occasionally and trying to focus most of the heat on the joint, this copper coil was alright. It's quite important not to quench this, just let it cool naturally. And while it's cooling in the outer part of the workshop, I'm in the inner part of the workshop 
marking out the top cap and the base for the condenser. A word of advice, when handling metal that's been cut on a guillotine, some of the edges are razor sharp, so before working with the parts, I took them into the outer part of the workshop and cleaned up the edges using my 4-inch belt sander. I feel that this is a very important thing to do, having cut my fingers many times on sharp pieces of guillotine metal. You live and learn. In this clip, I've accurately sat the boiler on the piece of steel, and I'm marking the positions where the bolts will be to hold the boiler to the steel. The alignment of the castings that support the boiler are not 100% accurate. So once I'd marked the positions for the bolts, I wrote on the piece of steel so I would always know where I was with it. This piece of 3mm thick brass is going to be the base. The cross on it is accurately aligned with the corners, and I'm measuring along the lines by the corners 5 eighths of an inch and making a mark. Eventually I will be drilling four 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter holes on the marks in each corner. And this is how I will secure the condenser to the baseboard. More about that in the next episode. While I've been doing this, the condenser has cooled sufficiently to put it in the acid bath. There's quite a lot of oxidisation and flux to remove, so I'm going to leave it in the acid bath for a couple of days. My acid bath isn't very strong. It contains 10 bottles of Kilrock K kettle descaler to half a dustbin full of water. Here's a very approximate position of the plumbing. The pipe's a bit too long, but you get the idea. These clips were filmed before I silver soldered the coil in place. I have the final layout, and I hope the customer is watching this video. It is most important to think about the pipe runs before you start the piping. So, for instance, the outlet is at the right-hand side of the boiler, where it says superheated tube outlet. I'm going to make a steam turret that fits on top of the boiler, and this will feed steam to both of the engines with a spare outlet for running a steam engine that's not in the plant. By making sure all the steam connections are at the same end of the plant, the right hand side as you look at it here, that will ensure that all of the steam piping is as short as it can be, and by cladding the piping in string as usual, it will keep the steam hot. I've also turned round the S50, and this is an obvious thing that I completely missed when I first set the layout. I quite like the symmetry of this and it really does make a lot of sense. I'll change the position of the exhaust outlet on the double 10, which will move it closer to the condenser. I've seen quite a lot of model steam plants completely ruined by terrible piping, and I'm going to make sure that the piping on this one is as neat as possible. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.